common piece of advice when learning a new programming language or framework is to come up with a project idea and build it. But this approach only works if you're learning one, maybe two concepts at a time. Learning Unity was much harder than that. Not only was I using C Sharp for the first time, but I was also learning about game engines, the difference between standard, universal, and HD render pipelines, how animations worked, game dev concepts like entity component systems, HLSL shaders, making in-game UIs, how prefabs worked, building games for release, and much more. I knew that a self-directed project-based approach would not be the most productive way to learn Unity. So instead, I decided to make 10 games by following 10 different tutorials. And in this video, I want to take you through each one. Now, before we get started, I'm just going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Cool. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first game I made in Unity was Flappy Bird. I made this following GMTK's step-by-step -step tutorial guide. Even though this tutorial was only 45 minutes, it took me an entire day to complete it. I understood the core concepts pretty quickly, but the problems came when I tried to skip forward in the tutorial. I would often miss a small step like toggling a button or accidentally mess up the UI in my editor. This forced me to double back and rewatch the same part of the tutorial that I rushed through and try to figure it out from there. The key lesson here was to watch every step in the video, even if I understood where it was headed, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. The second game I made was a 2D platformer. I made it by following a tutorial from Coding in Flow. In this game, you play as a character that can move around and collect cherries. Once you collect the cherries and reach the finish line, you are teleported to a new level. If you hit an obstacle, then the game will restart. Coding in Flow's teaching style was different from GMTK's in that he taught at a slower pace, but he went way more in depth for each subject. If you want to make 2D games, then you can just watch these two tutorial series and you'll have more than enough knowledge to build and release a game. But my interest is in 3D game dev, so I moved on to the next tutorial. For my third game, I followed Coding in Flow's 3D platformer tutorial. It's essentially very similar to the previous game, except this time you do everything with an extra dimension. The player you control can collect coins and kill enemies. Once the player reaches the end of the level, they get transported to the next level. At this point, I was feeling comfortable with the basics and I wanted to challenge myself with a more complex project. After digging around, I found a treasure trove of tutorials from Sebastian Lag, and the next seven tutorials I followed are all from his channel. For my fourth game, I followed Sebastian Lag's Procedural Planets tutorials. This was when things really started to pick up in difficulty. I learned how to construct a sphere with six different meshes, then add layered noise to it using the first noise layer as a mask to get proper mountains and oceans. I also learned the basics of HLSL shaders by building one that colored the planet's lands and oceans. When I started this project, I knew that it was way beyond what I'd be able to make if I tried to build it out on my own, but just going through the motions and completing the tutorial series helped me understand how far you can go with the Unity game engine. Felt like picking up a powerful item in a video game, but not being at the correct level to use it. It gave me something to look forward to. For my fifth game, I followed Sebastian Lag's Terrain Generation tutorial series. I found myself struggling through this series, and eventually learned a very important lesson. That lesson is to work on a tutorial that slightly exceeds your current knowledge level. This way, you feel like you're always learning something new, but at the same time not struggling to keep up. In this case, the tutorial series felt well beyond my knowledge level, and if I could go back in time, I'd do it as my ninth or 10th tutorial rather than my 5th one. But overall, I was pretty happy to make it through 14 of the 21 tutorials and get a working prototype of procedural terrain with a level of detail system and a movable player. I decided to take a step back and do something a little on the easier side. So for my sixth game, I followed Sebastian Lag's Gradient Editor tutorial series. In it, I started learning about what editor scripts are, why they're useful, and how to build a simple one. I made a custom gradient editor similar to the one that already exists in Unity, but this one is a little less restrictive. You can add more than five colors in it. This was really fun for me because I felt like I was able to easily grasp the topics and completed it in less than a day. This certainly boosted my confidence and helped me realize that I was actually making some progress in learning Unity. For my seventh game, I followed Sebastian Lag's Field of View Visualization tutorial series. Here, you basically have a character that can see a certain amount. As the character moves and changes directions, you can see that their field of view gets blocked by obstacles. Near the end, I ran into some trouble setting up the shader for the visualization. I think it's because I was using the universal render pipeline while the tutorial was using the standard render pipeline, but I can't be certain. Either way, I learned a lot. For my eighth game, I followed Sebastian Lag's Shape Editor tutorial. This series is similar to the Gradient Editor in that it goes over how you can extend the Unity Editor. Essentially, you can place some points and generate a shape with those points. This type of tool can be useful if you want to procedurally place objects in a scene. I mean, I don't know how to do that yet, but that's what Sebastian said, so I'll take his word for it. For my ninth game, I followed the Curve Editor tutorial series, another one from Sebastian. I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. You basically generate some points and create a smooth curve between them using the Bezier curve algorithm. After that, you can extrude geometry from it and create a road-like structure. And of course, you can keep the road open or closed. 
For my 10th and final game, I made a top-down shooter following another one of Sebastian Lack's tutorial series. This was a 25-part tutorial series that went over the entire process of building a game. I learned about level generation, guns, player movement, reloading, enemy navigation, menu screens, music, sound effects, and much more. I definitely recommend it if you specifically want to make a 3D game, because it covers a wide array of topics that are all very relevant. After making these 10 games, I finally consider myself to be an advanced beginner in the Unity game engine. There's still a lot I don't know, and I've already forgotten some of the concepts I just learned. But the important thing is that I've now turned unknown unknowns into known unknowns. What this means is that even if I don't know how to exactly solve a problem, I at least know what to Google and that's progress. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.